What is up, down and sideways, you beautiful individuals? Welcome back. It's Lee Guy Unlock, Eric and Mark here with you beauties. And this faker ascends into the Hall of Legends. It feels only fitting that we look back at who the greatest specific mid lane rivals have been for the GOAT over the years. That's right, just mid lane, so no deft, no Uzi we're talking about this list. It felt like for a stretch, every split or two, there was a new young upstart player that everyone was saying, Ooh, is this the rival that takes down Faker? A bit like other MMOs and World of Warcraft. And every single time, it's Faker and World of Warcraft standing yep. the test of time and being there on top of everybody. But there are a few occasions. There are some outliers that do stick out, and maybe they're not always getting the best of someone like Faker and his incredible career. They have been a thorn in his side and have taken away accomplishments or trips to finals or other things like that away from our unkillable Demon King. What a better time to revisit some of these iconic matchups and challenges for him than for the Hall of Legends feature. And a couple of guys before we even get to the main list. Showmaker, not on this main one. Obviously, Faker and Idol to him. There was a small stretch where there was a rivalry, but after Dom won one Worlds, T1 has just had their number for like three straight years. That's the problem, is we were building up to one of these being the possibility with Showmaker, and then we haven't really seen the rest of the damn one squad be able to carry him through into that matchup and have that power, because there's so many other areas where you're losing in these matchups than just that matchup against Faker that it can't just be all about you and that individual rival in that sense. Some fantastic ones if you go back that clock to that early 2020 type of time zone before but after that i don't think we get the occasions to put a matchup like that into this rivalry list a couple other quick fun ones we gotta mention ryu solely because every time you play that zed clip i think an angel gets its wings so we're just doing our part with that one but early on ryu was one of the premier mid laners in the lck before faker broke him a little bit then you got gbm remember gbm before he came to the lcs everyone was touting this guy as the next upstart mid laner in the lck man uh, you bringing back some some memories there going back down that trip down memory lane gbm and absolutely when you're talking about ryu and that play that iconic play faker what was that of course that's got to be on the list those are pretty much the two beginning two earliest forms of the faker rivalry that we got to see and quickly that's a 2-0 in the favor of faker right away in these honorable mentions uh looking at these two in the way that he had taken down his rivals now we get to the actual big ones we want to deep dive into and you gotta start with the guy who faker was debuting against accidentally evolving the kha'zix ulti under turret and getting his first solo kill it is ambition who if you only paid attention to later days of league yes he started as a mid laner and he was the mid laner in the lck before faker we were constantly talking about ambition on cj entis as the star Yes, and I think that this is one of the only times that we can go back into the early years or earlier years of the LCK and identify that there was somebody that could challenge, could rise up, could be a superstar on the other side of that billing compared to Faker and how he was building up and how that potential was being realized by everybody around the world. This is a special player and the matches against Ambition were special occasions. You get to go and see, especially of course, first one love that one that is the the great example of an early uh, pounce and one of those type of things where that's a mistake that you can't give over to someone at a professional level and that was a mistake that you certainly learned that you can never make against someone like faker to give an advantage like that over and what type of damage and power he can do but this is where the rivalries start to kick in because you get that pushback you get that pounce back you get that thorn in the side of a 2017 world championship victory for ambition taking that away from t1 after t1 did the same to him the year before and i'm not saying you know he was running from faker to roll swap to jungle but probably a nice caveat that he didn't have to lane against the guy anymore who quickly ascended to being the best mid laner uh, in the lck so yes even though ambition did roll swap this rivalry did start in the mid lane as you saw that transition from ambition being the world-class mid laner to faker taking that mantle 
Gotta gotta give it that early spot in this type of list to represent it in the history of the rivalries that Faker has gone through. But one of those ones, as you mentioned, that change to jungle slowly puts it behind. And of course, not necessarily enough runway room after you get that first thorn, you get that jab back from Mr. Ambition with that world championship. After then, you know, what was it? One, two years pretty much that we had at that point, And it was very clearly an edge for Faker moving on from that point as well, even with struggling SKT teams during that time. Maybe the only guy on this list who actually felt like a kryptonite at times to Faker, and that is Samsung slash EDG Pawn. If you remember watching some of these Samsung White series and even some of the EDG series, Pun! There's one series he gets a solo kill on Faker three games in a row, and one of the very few times was in these matchups where you could see Faker visibly frustrated on the cams, and it was time and time again when he matched up against Pawn. He was one of the only players that you could identify at this time that I felt like could control the game away from Faker, that could wrestle, it could do his own thing to put you in a position where you do get frustrated as Faker because you're not able to change the game. You're not able to alter from something else. You're always left in that response position from your opponent and your responses, well, they're never good enough to give you that edge at any other point. Pawn did that so fantastic throughout his career. So many people, including the matchup against the greatest of all time in Faker. I love that you bring up the EDG days as well, because that's something that I think a lot of people forget about when they're looking at someone like Pawn over his career or something even as simple as looking at the rivalry with Faker, the hyper focus in on the Samsung White days and there, you go back to the EDG days, we did get some banger matchups between these two. Yeah, and obviously, first and foremost is that Morgana pick in game five of MSI where he completely nullified the then undefeated LeBlanc. And I'm pretty sure, you'd have to double check the comps, but I'm pretty sure Pawn is the guy being like, let him pick LeBlanc, I got the counter, and he executes it to perfection. Bates him in, the one of the most iconic bait-ins and counter picks in League of Legends history. Yes, the Morgana that ends the undefeated LeBlanc reign of Faker. That's the LeBlanc that's making into that $500 skin package. Is the one that so gets you guys can do Pons it too Morgana. for only $499. <laughs> you don't need to be on the MSI stage to get taken down by that Morgana. Pawn showed you just how it's done. And, um, you know, obviously EDG and Samsung White. 2014 is kind of the era where SKT fell off a bit, even though Faker was maybe still playing well. But guys like Pawn and a squad like Samsung White were the main reason why they were getting completely obliterated and not qualifying for that world championship. A guy who's very familiar with matching up against Faker at that same world championship is the Spring Tiger, Mr. Zhao Hu. These guys have been going toe to toe since 2016. And yes, even though Faker has had the better of this rivalry, save for 2022 MSI finals, which was when Zhao Hu had swapped back to the mid lane. So, did get a big mid lane title against Faker, but these guys have matched up so many times and traded so many different blows. You had to mention Zhao Hu in this rivalry. This one has stood the test of time. We have had multiple encounters, and yes, it is favored in the side of Faker when you look through at the record. As most of these matchups are. It's, it's going to be an impossible list if you're looking for that equal footing type of situation with Faker. Someone like Xiaohu and how he has stood the test of time, what he has done, you can go back and look at some of these iconic moments, and yes, he might not get that ultimate edge against Faker in that one, but certainly very tough and hard-fought matches is the way that you look through this one with Xiaohu. You can go back through a couple of them, of course, as you laid out. He gets the edge in, uh, you know, at MSI and gets that one. There are MSI matches where Faker does get the edge. There are Worlds matches. Faker gets the edge in these type of things. We've seen these two, of course, at All-Star events even. You can throw that into the category. But the big ones for me, I'm looking back at, uh, of course, 2017 semifinals. Faker, five games of Galio that Xiaohu had to deal with. And then, of course, gets his revenge at the MSI. And most recently, had a chance to get that elder, that additional thorn, the extra rose to have the thorns against Mr. Faker. 
not not in luck at the World Championship Finals. Weibo, unfortunately, falling to the hands of T1. They've now matched up, I'm pretty sure, at every possible stage at Worlds. They met in groups, they met in quarters, they met in semis, they met in finals, they've met in MSI finals and the group stage, so they've played pretty much every marquee event you can on the international stage. And even though it's Faker and SKT coming on top, these are never blowout series. There's always a back and forth push and pull, and it's usually from Zhao who's still stepping up when he gets to that Faker head-to-head. -head. Another LPL brethren of him, originally from the LCK. Obviously, you got to mention Scout on this list because he also has the added caveat of being the backup for Faker before he came over to ADG and created his own legacy. Oh, don't you love that storyline, man? The backup coming through gets his own squad. And then eventually you build back up. You get a couple of these matchups. And yes, you do get a world champion in Scout as well. This is one of those fun ones to look back on, of course, because of that dynamic between Scout and Faker oh, when they were on the same team together. I think both of them actually have talked about it having relatively good uh, relationship with each other while they were on the team. And, and, you know, of course, this is a long time ago now and young, young times for these both of these players. But certainly as we moved into twilight years of their career, seeing both of them lead the charge in these type of ways might not have necessarily quite the same type of, of history that you run into each other as many times as you do with someone like Xiao Hu uh, that we just talked about. But Scout and Faker, what a great duo to, to look at in this rival. And, you know, it felt like they matched up so many times at Worlds, usually in the group stage. And you had these iconic EDG falling up short in 2017. Obviously, that's the 10K comeback, even though Scout is getting solo kills on Lucian early in that matchup against Faker and then going all the way to 2021. Remember, SKT beats EDG to be first in that group and EDG goes on to win the entire world championship. Everybody misses that one. That's definitely got to be one that you put on the bingo card. Trivial Pursuit for Worlds when you're going through it because yes, it was T1 that earned the edge against EDG, but EDG kept it on all the way through that event and Scout, a major major part of that world championship run for the edg team and a major part even when you go later in lng he's the guy has so many mvps in the lpl there's a reason he's been around for so long and there's a reason there's that equal respect between both faker and scout recognizing the greatness that one another has talk about longevity bdd when he first came on the scene was a guy much like GBM, that people were talking about, maybe this guy, he is the next faker, potentially. BDD wins back-to-back -back MVPs in 2017 summer, in 2018 spring, two titles in a row. 2018 is the slump for SKT, and it was looking like BDD was the king of the LCK. Outside of everybody that we've talked about to this point, I think only Pawn could claim to be, at one point, that rival to the level that uh, that BDD was to Faker at certain points throughout his career, really when it was that hot hand. And you're looking at those, you know, coming off of the Longju uh, DRX type of time, straight into rolling on, on KT. That was hot for BDD. He was rolling and he was the challenger to Faker in the mid lane. And not just the challenger, he was the winner most of those times in those matchups getting ahead. And he, just like Pawn, playing a game where he could control he could take the advantage he could dictate just what your options were and none of those options were going to be pleasing to the unkillable demon king problem is eventually uh we got a retooled and refit skt roster built up around faker and since then the rivalry has kind of pivoted back in faker's corner I mean, it was like you know all of a sudden the other theme park unleashes their new roller coaster you put yours into maintenance for that summer. You do the retooling For the next yourself. five years. <laughs> and, and then T1 came out with a quadruply loop-de-loop -loop at the spiral wazoo type of roller coaster that is their new world championship winning lineup. And of course, those type of lineups were not where BDD could compete. And of, and of course himself, not necessarily having those performances is where this rivalry does tend to tail off, does drop off at a point. But you do got to look at it through a certain window of time and I think that's where you can truly appreciate and put this type of rivalry up with some of the others that we have talked about already.
And, you know, BDD still has been hovering in that fourth spot of the godfathers of LCK mid laners for multiple, multiple years now. We have been talking about him. A guy on this list people might scoff at. You say, you got a Western player? A rival to Faker? That's absolute lunacy. But the only guy you can put in that conversation is Caps. Claps. It's not Baby Faker anymore. Nobody's calling him that because he has evolved and we have seen him. You can talk about the peak 2019 when he beat Faker in back-to-back best of fives, two straight international events. Even 2020, he was competing against them. But every time they match up, despite Caps often getting a little bit juked by Faker at some of these big events, he has shown that he can go toe-to-toe with them. If you're upset, if you're not accepting of a Western player or someone like Caps being at that level to have one of these notable rivalries with Faker, give yourself a slap. I would slap you, but I'm not going to lay hands on you. So you got to do it yourself because you're crazy. You are crazy to deny this man this type of title, especially when you have the head-to-heads like Caps has had. And yes, favored for Faker. Of course, that's a that's a theme throughout this list. It's almost, again, impossible to find ones that are not favored for this guy and how important and how professionally amazing he has been faker that is something to say we are talking about what caps has done and you do need to realize yes of course baby faker was the nickname that we were rolling through early in the career but he has carved out enough individual achievements and achievements against faker himself on the other side of the mid lane to deserve to be out of that shadow to be claps to be caps we have seen this player only western player i think ever that has risen up to these type of levels to challenge and show that individual level of play on the international stage and to top it all off he's done that against the greatest of all time come on put some respect on claps people and you know we've seen him do this not against just faker but multiple eastern star players whether it's other guys on this list bdd Xiao scout we've seen caps level up against all of these guys but he continually is the only western player where you see these matchups against marquee names like the goat and you're not worried because you know caps is gonna hold his own and it's not a situation when you're going through a, a BDD and Pawn where it's more about, oh, it's just their play style. They or they lead to this type of thing and then your options are not going to be your normal type of options because they're played this way and they control this type of way. That's not been it. It's just been a flat out, well, we're going to play our type of thing and you, you might do your type of thing, but I'm going to be better than you in this lane. Just 1v1 type of situation in that play. That is what we have seen when Caps is matched up against Faker. Sure. We've absolutely seen the responses. We have seen the clap backs from Faker in certain points, especially uh, best of series between these two that we have been fortunate to see. But make no mistake, Caps is always there for the challenge, and he has taken it time to time to Faker and to T1. G2 and T1 always deliver on the rift, and the main reason why is because of this iconic mid lane matchup. Last guy on this list. We alluded to it with Pond. He felt like the kryptonite for Faker. The only guy on this list that right now you could maybe say the rivalry is actually in Chovy's favor. And I know internationally, yes, Faker has all the accolades that Chovy doesn't, but they've hardly matched up internationally. When you look domestically and head-to-head matchups, he's got four straight titles versus Faker in the LCK Finals. How can you not say the edge is in Chovies right now? Even if, even if you strictly valued international head-to-heads results, these type of things, it would be impossible to ignore the type of gap, the type of disruptance that Chovy has caused to Faker's reign in the LCK. You look at the domestic head-to-heads, you look through these best-of series, Faker's only, I think, got an 8 and 7 advantage all time. And you look at the full-time history of that one, where those wins came from, it's a lot of early wins in those best-of-series advantages for Faker. A lot of 3-0 Griffin finals. Yeah, Yeah, once Chovy hits on to Gen G, it's a different story. It explodes. It is the championship reign for someone other than T1 in the LCK. This is a phenomenal player, one of these other ones along the veins of Caps that can just straight up 1v1 
straight up dish it out and say, I'm better than you. I'm going to win against you. And I'm going to win against your teammates type of situation. Chovy is the real deal. He is a mega alarm threat for a rival to Faker. It feels like it's the only mid lane matchup in recent years where you're saying it's it's a disadvantage for T1 or SKT. You know, all the tangibles that Faker does, sure, but you're looking at the straight 1v1 matchup and Chovy has had his way in a lot of these best ofs against T1 and even going back to some of the years he was losing, it didn't matter if it was Griffin, DRX, Hanwha Life, all these different teams, Chovy individually time and time again was equaling or outperforming Faker in that mid lane. It feels like you step into a series against almost any other mid lane or even some of these ones that we've listed out here and you can have that faith, you can have that chance that of course Faker can pull out, he can pull out that advantage in lane, he can get a win here, he can get a win there, these type of things. But when you've seen Faker line up against Chovy so many times, you resign yourself to the fact that he's going to lose lane. He's going to lose certain fights against this guy. We have to bet on the unbelievable factor that is the X factor of the unkillable Demon King where he just pulls off. He finds the miraculous play. He gets the pick that you needed at the right time all these type of things that is what you've resigned yourself to and yes he's such an un unbelievable incredible player that you can resign yourself to that and feel we still have a chance because we know that that is enough of a possibility that he can deliver on one of those moments one of those plays and that possibly is enough to push you over the finish line but for the best player of all time and you're counting on that that is a statement to what Chovy brings to the lane and what type of kryptonite meant. Uh, kryptonite, that is the son of Superman out there <laughs> dishing it out against Faker. The biggest compliment to Chovy is we're no longer talking about him as the next Faker. He has fully stepped out of that shadow and he is just the patron saint of the Church of Chovy and has fully stepped into his own role and garnered respect worldwide. He is the ultimate rival to Faker, but that is it today. For League Unlock, Eric and Mark here with you beautiful people. Thank you for hanging out, and we will catch you on that flippity flip.